Jane, and thanks everyone for joining this morning. Um, Julie, are you ready? And folks who were just here for the first session this morning, go ahead and um, leave the meeting and head to your next one. And those who are here for our next presentation, Yes, Callie, we are ready. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and get us started. If you can hear me, can you hear me okay? Yes, ma'am, we can. All right, perfect. Well, let me get get us started. So welcome this morning um, to uh, what is new for all of us, virtual lead, but it seems to be um, very successful. We have tons of people sign up, and so we're excited to have you here. We're excited that you're joining our Healthy Lifestyles Exploration session we are we we have lots of information to cover in one hour if you're familiar with extension you know we have lots to say sometimes so we will move fairly quickly but please feel free to um, note questions in the chat box and we will try our best to keep up with those so um, we will get started and so today when we're, we will be exploring healthy lifestyles and really looking at how we can expand current uh, program efforts with uh, new opportunities and new contests and new activities for kids that are exciting that are hands-on and so with me today I have two of uh, of my longtime uh, teammates with developing the Healthy Lifestyles contest, and that is Barbie Weimar and Micah Holcomb. And so you will be hearing more from these ladies who I deem the experts at the Healthy Lifestyles contest. And so stay tuned to, to hear more from them. But basically today we are, we're going to explore what this personal health and personal safety project area is. Many people think of, um, they think of family community health projects. They only think of maybe the foods and nutrition project or the fashion interior design project. But we wanna explore a little more into what the health and personal safety project is as well. We also want to identify those new learning experiences and new contest opportunities related to this project. Um, some of you may or may not be familiar with some of those, so we want to expose you to, to those today. And then also just really have almost a, a kind of a hands-on virtual little practice contest with you today so you can, you can learn more about the Healthy Lifestyles in, Invitational Contest and how you can prepare yourself or if you're a project leader on how, or an agent how you can prepare your 4-H youth for that as well. Uh, oh, well. Okay, if, I'm hearing some feedback. Is everyone muted? All right. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the Health and Personal Safety Project. Let me just pull up here. Okay, what the really what the health and health I'm sorry health and personal safety project is it really teaches um, 4-H members how to improve their overall health. Um, it looks at um, different things beyond you know beyond just the nutrition and physical activity component of health. It's going to take a look at all aspects and all components or the umbrella of health. Did my screen stop sharing here? Let's try that again. How about now? We still can't see it, Julie. Okay, were you seeing it earlier? Uh, no, ma'am. Oh, how strange, because it's showing, it is sharing. Let's try this again. How about now? There we go. Okay, perfect. I'm not sure what happened there, but, um, and I'm sorry, you'll, let me, let me back up real quick, because I do want, if I can, and I can't, so we'll just keep moving forward. Um, so the health and personal safety really looks at the umbrella of health, looks beyond nutrition and um, physical health. It looks at more really the um, social, emotional, all of those aspects of health that are out there, um, teaching best practice, practices related to safety, um, you know, thinking about what, you know, health issues are out there, what safety issues are out there, and there's lots of opportunities that we have to, to teach those. And so when we look at learning opportunities, those occur in a variety of methods. Um, those occur through, you know, meetings and workshops, and they may look very different than, um, you know, some of the traditional project areas. And so what that might look like is, um, you know, workshops that are on, 
maybe something in the healthcare field. It may be on passenger safety. It may be tours of, you know, uh, EMS departments or hospitals. And so it, it may look a little different than, um, and I apologize for that sound, it may look a little different than a foods and nutrition project workshop or a, a fashion design project workshop. And it also may look different in a little of service learning. And so service learning, we may look at, you know, for a prime example, um, during the pandemic, you know, the face mask, you know, operation face mask, that is the, you know, related to the health and personal safety project. We also have as a component of the project, our Healthy Texas Youth Ambassador Program. And so as you can see these, you know, kids, they are um, trained every year. And what we can do is, you know, really empower those youth with health education and health information to really be an outreach of the county extension agent or their project area. Um, and it again, it expands beyond just the sort of traditional um, thought of, of, of family and community health. And so for instance, this is an example on the screen of we're using our Healthy Texas Youth Ambassadors and virtual reality goggles to um, teach about distracted driving. And so these youth, um, last year we had about 140 youth. Um, we had, um, you know, they reached about 9,000, had gave about 9,000 hours back um, into service. And this year we, um, we just closed our registration on Friday and we have 177 signed up that have been approved. And so, um, which is a great, um, you know, great thing. And I have a question here coming up. When did the results for the healthy ambassadors come in? What we'll do, um, Paige, is we will start compiling an annual report now that we have all the, everything closed down and that will be out um, sometime um, this summer, probably late, um, late July, early August. Okay, so now we want to look a little bit about project opportunities before we delve into, um, you know, really the hands-on part of this. And so um, there are several contest opportunities related to health and personal safety. One is, of course, our traditional record book. We're all sort of tying that up right now, I think. Um, my personal kids, they finally were very um, happy to get those submitted last week. Um, also, educational presentations, tying with this project health and wellness, that um, category, and then also the open family community health category. And with the open family community health category, that actually is a national qualifying contest. And so that one qualifies um, to go to Denver as well as the Healthy Lifestyles Invitational, which is a national qualifying contest for um, Denver as well. And so we're going to talk specifically today about the Healthy Lifestyles Invitational because many people are not familiar with that. And so we're excited to, to share that and share really what that, that looks like. And so uh, Micah, I believe I'm going to turn this over to you. Oh, I'm not sure what's happening there to our screen. Someone's having some scribbling. Yes, they are. <laughs> what do you want? I don't know what's going on. I'm not sure either, but let's stop sharing for just a second. While you go ahead, I'm going to go ahead and get started on it, if that works, Julie. Yes, ma'am. You should be able to see it back up again today, right? Okay. Now. Can everybody hear me all right? Hopefully so. Excellent. Okay, so I'm going to talk about the Healthy Lifestyles Invitational Contest Opportunity. Um, if some of you have been part of a judging contest and just like consumer decision making and livestock judging, horse judging, it's a kind of similar to that. Um, it's more similar to the consumer contest than anything. But what we do is we have a team of three to four people. Um, if you do not have a team and you want to participate at Healthy Lifestyles at State, you can actually do that. And what we do for the group part is we actually team you up with someone else. So uh, you may even be teamed up with someone um, all the way across the state to make a team for the group presentation. So that might actually happen. Um, but it's a lot of fun and it's a great way to get to know people there. Um, but generally we do have a teams that enter. Um, you'll receive eight classes. Uh, seven minutes to judge those, so just typical to a judging class, and those are worth 50 points each. And then um, within those, you'll have a choice to either do a scenario class, which you'll see up above on top on the altering recipes. That's an example of 2018 class. And then we will also, we also have a questions one, which is 10 questions. 
And um, the example on the bottom right corner is an example of our physical activity class that we've had question wise. So that's a little bit different than your regular judging but um, it does make it for something different within our healthy lifestyles. And it's over one of our topics and we're gonna talk about that in a little bit. Uh, then we also have the presentation part of the contest and that is one presentation, which is also 50 points. And I believe Barbie's gonna talk about that in a minute, but the general, it's 10 minutes to evaluate as a team and three minutes to judge. So uh, we're gonna break down each one of those. I'm gonna let them uh, Julie and Barbie go into that part and then I'll come back in a minute. Okay, we will, can you hear me all now? Yep. Okay, perfect. Um, so let's talk a little bit about um, healthy lifestyles, what those classes cut. So we have reasons on here, but really we're going to talk about, it's not really reasons in healthy lifestyles invitational, it's really a presentation. Um, but the, you know, healthy lifestyles invitation really starts with, it's very similar, you know, as most people know, can, related to, you know, I think about livestock judging very similar to that, our consumer decision making. And so each year we put together a guide and we identify classes. And so you can see there, um, hopefully this is um, this this year's invitational, which of course, because Texas 4-H Roundup was, is supposed to be occurring this week and is not for us contest. Um, we did not get to have that, but we're, you know, looking at some, some options. Um, but this year our classes were ATV safety, food packaging and labeling, sunglasses, hydration and sports drinks, sun safety, physical activity, sports injury prevention, and e-cigarettes and vaping. And so we really try to take these classes and design them so that they are, uh, you know, not only appealing to young people, but they are relatable to things that are going on in their lives. And so as you can see, um, you know, we, we, we've changed up those classes if you've seen them in the past, but for example, the e-cigarettes and vaping, that is something that's a very hot topic. And so we want you to be able to not only learn about those, you know, that topic for contest purposes, but just to improve their health and, and maybe change their behaviors or help them, you know, change others' behaviors related to that, that topic. And so um, your resources are there or the classes are there, and I'll show you where to get your resources on the next slide. Um, but for all of those classes, there is a resource guide of some sort, or there are links um, to specific websites that are research science based that we utilize for the materials when we're developing those classes um, for either placing classes or questions classes. So one of the things as we start looking at um, putting classes together, um, I, I sort of lined out three things is when you start you know, designing these classes or as an agent or as a leader um, or even as a, a team leader that's maybe helping younger um, 4-H'ers participate, you know, you can oftentimes put together practice classes. You want to be concise, you want to be objective, and you want to be consistent. And so let's take a look at um, really what a class would look like and give you an example of that. Oh, actually, before we do that, <laughs> let me do, do, do this. I forgot I, I threw this slide in. So as you look at, this is a website where the the resources come from. The list is there, as you can see. Um, and I'll just show you this um, arrow points to for the sports injury prevention resources. Instead of, you know, a, a fact sheet, we, we drive you to um, a specific website that has fact sheets. And so that way, those are PDFs, you can download them, you can print them out if you want to. But I also wanted to um, show you that we look at a variety of, um, when we're looking at these topics, we don't just look, you know, when you say sports injury prevention, what is some of the first things we think of when we think of sports? Maybe we think of concussions in football. Maybe we think of, um, you know, injuries in, in baseball or softball as far as, um, you know, shoulder injuries. But one thing we want to drive is we want to um, really drive the topic to include as many different varieties of sports and activities because our kids are all different. We want our, our, our resources to be different and hopefully address those things. And so you'll, you'll see one of the... Um, resources about performing overuse injuries in instrumentalist. And so a lot of times in orchestras and bands, there are some injuries that may occur in using instruments repetitively. And so again, we try to look at, you know, um, not just the traditional topic, but maybe some non-traditional that, that are out there for, for our youth. 
Okay, so here is an example of a class. This would be what we call a placing class. And so I just want to talk over um, um, really the logistics of, of not only putting it together, but if you look at this, um, each of the classes will have just a basic scenario. And so that is at the top there. It talks about Tanil is taking her baby to the beach. And she has an infant. This is a sun safety class. So she has the infant five months old. We know the age of that infant. Therefore, we're going to rely on our studying and our resources and what we've learned from those to apply our knowledge to this class. And so we're going to take in consideration that once she's going to the beach, so there's going to be sun, the baby is young, um, she knows the dangers of the sun, and we're going to help her provide or find that best protection. And so as you can see, each of these are, are broken down into options, just like consumer decision making classes or even livestock judging classes. They're broken down and they're very concise in their wording. They're very understandable. There is not a ton of information. I will tell you that 20 years ago when I, or 20 plus years ago when I started, what we would often do is we would often, um, you know, look at, go out and actually have the objects on the table during the contest. But now um, we found that it's much easier. And so when you're putting these together at home or for your group, you can put them together just using images and things that can be pulled simply from the, the internet. Um, but the wording and for each of the options, again, it's, it's very concise, it's very specific because we don't want to confuse our youth. We don't want to try to uh, trick them. We want to be very straightforward. And so, you know, again, the option one, she can bring an umbrella to carry in case they need it. There's the infant swimsuit, what that, um, um, you know, looks like what, you know, an infant hat. And then we talk about sunscreen and things like that. Um, so again, as you work through those, what you would do is then based on the scenario, determine how you would place this class. You would place them, you know, um, one, two, three, four, or four, three, two, one, whatever you decide um, that placing should be. And so um, we wanted you to just see what a class would look like. And we're going to go into more specifics in a little later, but we want to at least kind of show you um, the placing classes. Now with that said, there's also another type of class that we, um, include in the contest. Similar again to like, I always go back to livestock judging, they have questions classes lots of times. And so when we think about questions classes for healthy lifestyles, those questions are related back to the resource. And so you may have when you, you know, when you're rotating through, you may come up to a table that is a questions class. And so on that table, you of course would not have the resource there, but you would have questions that are shown here on the screen as an example. So this is questions related to food packaging and labeling. And I will tell you that these are actually from previous contests. So these are actual um, examples of what you may see. And, but I wanted you to see how, when you're studying, how we don't just pull this, these questions from any resources. We do utilize the listed resources. We make sure our questions match up and there, there's going to be an answer for sure. So you can see there are examples, you know, again, the first one, a product contains at least 70% organic can be labeled. And you can see that's going to, to be like, go right back to um, when you're studying that it's made with organic. So I just wanted you to, to see that there is a variety of questions, but those will come directly from the resource. So Micah, I'm going to turn it over to you to help us understand what many people get often confused, oftentimes confused on. All righty, thank you. Um, actually, I did put in the chat, some of them were actually placing them. So good job to y'all. Um, I did put the answer for the sun safety one, which was 4321. So I just thought uh, some of them were getting excited and actually placing it. So thank y'all for doing that. We were really super excited. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about cuts. These are one things that are um, a little bit confusing at times, trying to understand it. So for instance, on the sun safety, I put the answer as 4321 and the cuts on that would have been 325. So I'm gonna go into a little bit of that. This one we're gonna actually talk about is if where placings were one, two, three, four and our cuts were three, four, five. Yeah. So I'm gonna talk about what do cuts actually mean. So when you're talking about cuts, uh, the first cut, which is the one three up there, um, 
you're talking about your top pair. So as in one over two, it's the amount of points and significant of its placing. And uh, if one is the best and no other placing compares, you may wanna have a higher cut such as five. Uh, this also means that the points would cut off and determine the score. Uh, so then um, if false is placed correctly, then and you place it two, one, three, four, then the score would be 45 if there's five points, uh, five cut on there. Or on this sense, it would actually be 47 because there's three points off. So I hope that kind of understands that top pair. And 50, again, 50 is the highest that you can place. The second cut number links with the middle pair, so two over three in this instance, and it's the amount of points and significant, again, taken off the middle pair. Now, some people compare the top and the bottom pair when doing that placing cut, but um, some just look at the actual middle, what two and three is. So it, it depends on who's actually putting those cuts together. So uh, if one and two are significantly better than three and four, then the cut may also be higher in that instance. The last cut number links with the bottom pair. So three over four and goes as the same as the others. Um, some of them, it, it all depends. That's just how I've always judged the consumer and then also with healthy lifestyles. Um, some people do it differently. Uh, we can go on to the next slide. Thank you, Julie. Uh, most times the competitor will only transport, transpose a couple of the pairs um, and it's really easy to score it that way. But unfortunately, sometimes if you've just completely put, say, four at the very top or four in the middle and then you've just put them all around and rearranged them and it's really hard, we use a thing called the Hormel scale. And that's how you, um, if you saw on the last page, um, Barbie actually had the old traditional Hormel scale um, a guide and calculator that we used to use. Uh, nowadays, luckily, we have great technology and we can use um, different types of Hormel scales online. Um, simply Googling or you can, um, judging card, uh, which a lot of people use, they have a actual Hormel judging card scale on their website as well. Um, if you're, if you're, uh, agent or volunteer running a contest. You can also use an app called eJudging Pro. I've used it and it's fantastic and it also saves your contest if you decide to pay for the app. Um, it's a great resource as an extension agent or a volunteer. So um, if there's, are there any questions? I'm trying to make sure that I look on my chat. Um, but yeah, uh, I think it's a really great, the the judging and the cuts. I really love them. If y'all have any questions and need more help on that, I'll be glad to give you my email if you have questions on more cuts, but um, there we go. Thanks yeah, and I will, I will comment real quick. Uh, something in the chat box is, is there's very, um, some have commented that some of the contests are similar with consumer or even with poultry judging. And that's very true. A lot of our, qu our classes are very similar and a lot of them really support each other and you can really um, you know, connect the different projects together oftentimes through some contest experience. So that's a great um, observation. So Barbie, I'm going to turn it over to you. Great, thanks. Um, the really neat part of healthy lifestyles that I love about it, um, you don't have to do reasons, but you get to do a group presentation. And if you're judging and there's only one from your county uh, that's going to participate, uh, we will put y'all in teams um, from other parts of the state. Um, if you don't have a full team and that way you can still do the group presentation. Uh, the group presentation, it can be fun. Um, it kind of depends on how interactive you want it to be within your team. Um, you're given a scenario of one of those eight classes um, that Micah and Julie talked about. Um, then you, you and your team have 10 minutes to work through that situation and then come up with a game plan on um, what you would do. There's no uh, necessarily right or wrong, um, but you're using what you've learned through the study guide to actually make your presentation with your teammates. Uh, there's no visual aids or guides that you can use. Everyone gets the same score on the team. It's worth 50 points. And the scores and presentations, um, they're based on the presentation, well-organized, 
Um, you state what you're, what you're thinking about, what you're doing. It's a logical sequence. You share the information accurately and up to date and complete and you deliver it and everybody in your team um, has to be a participant in, in there as well. The fun thing about the group presentations is you do not have to go in there and do straight out like an oral reasons group um, would do their presentations. Um, I love when the teams get together and they come up with something really creative, something fun. Some of them may act out their scenario and talk about it through acting it out. I'll never forget state roundup one year. It was on um, emergency uh, management and they did, there was a tornado and the kids talked about how they would shelter in place with the tornado and the things that they would go through and uh, the judges kind of lived through a tornado um, with that. And so the presentations can be a lot of fun, but you do have to think of a lot of the different materials um, that you want to get that information across to the judges so that they know that you're thinking through the whole process of that scenario. All right, and the next one. Oh, okay, so we'll do a uh, presentation in just a little bit, but we wanted to go through an actual contest with y'all. And Julie did the um, work, the thing work on the, where they could actually put in their answers. I think so. I'm going to hope this is working. Okay, so what you will do, um, if you will look there at the top of your screen um, and text, um, the number you're going to text to is 22333. And you can see you're going to text those letters, PTTP. So if you'll pull up your phone, um, pull out your smartphone, or um, you can, again, the number you're texting to is there, and then you're in your message, you're going to put PTTP. You should get a message that you are in, but do not click on the link that is there because it will take you somewhere else. So once you just get the uh, confirmation that you have joined Poll Everywhere, um, just stay right there and then we're going to move forward and, and give you specific instructions. But what will happen as we start answering this, your answers should show up on the screen and Barbie will walk us through the answers, the correct answers. Um, so we'll, we'll see how well you do with this. Okay, so is everyone just kind of give me a thumbs up or, um, <clears throat> yeah, if you want to use the chat, you can. Um, we just won't see your answers in the, the screen there, but if you have, you, you're welcome to use the chat, just a picture of selection in. But if you will, someone will let me know that they're seeing their confirmed into poll everywhere, we will get started. Oh, there we go. Actually, we're already sh showing, um, showing answers. So when driving an ATV, one should... Go ahead and just all you have to do is put the letter that corresponds with the answer you think is correct hit send and it will show up on our screen and barbie i'll let you walk through okay. and okay well i'll walk through all the answers and stuff okay sure all right y'all about finished with the first one all right last answer is going to be in there and the answer actually is A, when driving an ATV, one should stay on unpaved roads. ATVs, remember, all-terrain vehicles, so they should stay on unpaved roads. All right, next question. It is okay to have to stretch forward to reach the handlebars on your ATV. Ooh, this one's going to be a hard one. All right, everyone, all the answers in. The answer on this one is B, false. You want that ATV to fit you properly so that you're not having to stretch forward or stretch back too far and you can reach all the handlebars, the pedals, and all that kind of stuff. So the answer is B, 90, and 91% of y'all got that correct. Great job. All right, number three. A bicycle helmet is appropriate to wear while on an ATV. This one easier. Kind of 
kind of jumping back and forth a little bit. All right, I think we got most of our answers in on that one. It is false, B. You need to wear an ATV helmet, not a bicycle helmet when riding ATVs. All right, the next one. When trying to find the right size ATV, one should consider all except clearance between the ATV seat and inseam, throttle reach, brake reach, uh, if there's enough room for a passenger. Mm, y'all are that y'all are pretty good. All right, the answer on this one is what the majority of y'all have. It is D, and with y'all with ninety one percent, y'all were correct. All right, make sure that your ATV, if you're going to have doubles, you have to have it. It's got to be a an ATV for two people. All right, our next one. What component? Or components make up a perfect storm for ATV accidents. Is it speed, unsafe driving conditions, riding in, rider inexperience, or D, all of the above? Y'all are awesome. The answer is D. 100% of y'all. Good job. All right. When you ride an ATV, you use your what to balance and control the vehicle hands feet weight or all of the above all right i don't know this one may be the one that catches y'all Wow, okay, here's the answer. It is an overwhelmingly 4% of y'all got this one right. It's weight, C, weight is how you control the vehicle with balance. To balance and control, you use your weight for that. All right, an ATV has a maximum control if A, it, its wheels are off the ground. B, its wheels are in contact with the ground. C, it's the right size for the driver. And D, B, and C. See, this one would be a fun one to go back in and study. The answer is B, its wheels are in contact with the ground. So just out of curiosity so far, how many some of these answers have sort of shocked you and you thought you knew all there was to know about ATVs? Just put in the chat if you think it's a little surprising, yes or no. Yeah, it is. In fact, it's some of these, when I first saw them, it surprised me as well. And so again, this is going back to not only contests, but how many of our young people um, ride, and not young people, but even adults ride ATVs that assume they know everything about them. Um, this is just one way, again, of teaching those life skills, relatable life skills to our, our, our young people who can then go and teach them to their parents or other family members so that everyone stays safe. So what you've seen is you've seen the um, questions type class, but not all questions classes look just like this. So I'm going to put up the next one and it's a little different and I'll have um, Barbie explain this one and I'm hoping, read this and take notes because um, as we move forward, Forward, we cannot the scenario there will not be seen again so all right this one uh, this little scenario on the side is going to be uh, how you answer 8 9 and 10 so uh, the scenario applies to 8 9 and 10 Adam is 17 Ben is 12 and Lane is 8 and wanting to head outside and ride their ATV on the ranch their family has three ATVs ones the they've had for several years how should they ride their ATVs ATV A is a two-up, 
operating this ATM, a, uh, ATM, ATV, if they're under the age of 16, increases the chances of severe injury, death to uh, both operator and passenger, and never operate under the age of 16. ATVB is operation um, for children under the age of 14, increases the risk of severe injury or death. Adult supervision is required under the age of 16 and never permit children under the age of 14 to operate it. Um, ATVC is operation of this ATV by children under the age of 10 increases the risk and, of severe injury or death. Adult supervision uh, required for children under 16 and never permit children under the age of 10 to operate this one. All right, so think back at your um, now number eight, question number eight. Which ATV should Adam choose? Drive the ATV A, drive ATV V, ATV C, or since he is 17, it doesn't matter. All right, the answer to this one, just because he's under the, uh, he's 17, he still should go ahead and ride ATV A. So 71% of y'all got that one right, good job. All right, Ben, and if you remember Ben is 12, which ATV should Ben choose? Ben's 12. All right, on this one, Ben should ride ATV C, which is letter D, at 16%. 16% of y'all got that one right. Don't let those letters on the side confuse you, which one's ATV A, B, or C. All right, which ATV should Lane, Lane choose? Remember, Lane is eight years of age. Oh, y'all are paying attention. Awesome. Can anyone in the chat tell me why y'all think it was ATV A that Lane should, should ride? because he can't drive yet. So what would he be doing in, in ATVA? Correct, Jeb, Jeb, Jed, sorry. He would, be, he would be riding with his older brother. So he would be still on ATVA, but he would be a passenger and he wouldn't be allowed to drive yet. So good job. Y'all pay attention to those small little details, and sometimes those little details are what, is what will get you on some of these questions. All right, so we're going to switch gears a little bit and talk about, if I can get out of this here, um, what a actual placing class. We're going to give you an opportunity to do a placing class here, and you'll, you'll have um, the scenario here, and then um, about three slides later, we'll have you, have you um, again, participate in Poll Everywhere to provide the answer. So... Right. Um, on this one, just remember through the scenario, Sue will be participating in a half marathon that begins at 730. She will go to a bed early the night before because she will only have, she will have to get up at 5 a.m. in the morning for the event. It will take her approximately two hours to complete the event. She will drink water before, during, and after the workout, but is also planning to consume a non-caffeinated sugar-containing drink before the marathon to give her energy. What is her best drink choice? Yeah, and Julie circled a couple of the things that are important 
um, for you to look at in a scenario um, before you go back and you look at what are the actual products. Actually, Barbie, I didn't do that. So um, oh, if you're if you're um, not a presenter, okay. please don't circle or scribble on our screen. Okay, <laughs> Thank you. Sorry, you really nope. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're gonna. Okay, there you go. Number one is vitamin water zero, and it may be hard to see some of the nutritional um, uh, facts and values there. Uh, number two is Coca-Cola, regular Coca-Cola. Number three is a Gatorade Perform or Performer. And number four is Red Bull Sugar Free. You might wanna jot down which one's which. Um, so when the poll comes up, then we can do that. Vitamin Water Zero, Coca-Cola, Gatorade Performer, or Red Bull Sugar Free. Okay, so I'm gonna move to the next slide. Hopefully everyone's got their answers decided on. And Remember y'all are gonna place them from the top of the class to the bottom of the class, okay? Um, finish out all of them just like Micah was talking about with the placings and the cuts. So you're gonna go ahead and place them all in the order you think that they should go, all four products. Okay, if everyone has their placings or rankings, here we go, maybe. Okay, so type in which, how you placed it. Are any of these right? We're getting there. Seriously, half of my answers are not like. All right. If go ahead and finish up real quick, please make sure that you mute your mic I have a question. if you're not presenting. Okay, we have a question. There's someone that had questioned. If you want to type that in the. Uh, that would be great and we'll try to answer for everyone. All right, we're going to go ahead and do our placings here. Um, those of y'all that placed the class 3124, that is the official placings um, for the class. And if you wanna jot down on the side, um, the cuts, the cuts are three, five, and three. And then we'll see how y'all, if y'all remember how to do your cuts to see um, what your score was, if it wasn't the, the those of y'all that selected C, three, one, two, four, how many points you were off with the cuts and the placings. I'm seeing several 50s out there that are um, tagging in the on the chat box. That's a great job. Great job. If y'all need help with those, let me know. 47, that, that is not bad at all. And I still have my Hormel card to tell you <laughs> based on the Hormel card. <laughs> Got your little calculator out, Barbie? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I love that thing. Y'all did good. All those top, all those high 40s, that's awesome. 
That means you were just pretty much off one. You may have switched a pair around. So Barbie, are you ready to go on to the presentation I, scenario? I believe so. Okay. And on this one, um, I'm gonna ask all of y'all to, you may have to unmite for just a little bit and we'll just take one person at a time. But when we get to the scenario, uh, we wanna hear a little bit from you on what your thoughts are on this. So in other words, how would you present the, if you were in, a, in front of the judges, how would you take the scenario and how would you present it to the judges? What would be your idea of getting that information across? And what information would you include? Right. And um, with all of the eight classes that we have through Healthy Lifestyles, um, there's several that could actually be used and uh, beneficial for this scenario itself. The sun protection, um, sun safety. Um, we can use that all the time. We use that with consumer decision making as well as in healthy lifestyles. Um, you could even go back to food packaging and labeling. Um, sunglasses, hydration and sports, sun safety. Um, you could even do physical activity. So there's lots of different avenues you can think about in this one scenario that you and your team, when you got together, um, would look at. So. Someone tell us one of the things that you would, you think would be important to include in on your scenario or your presentation, I'm sorry. Okay, I have umbrella, sunscreen, glasses, hats, bug spray, food, water, swimsuits. That's a good one. Um, sunscreen, water, food, hats, towels, life preserver, floaties. Good. Um, a tent for shade. Great. Sunscreen and Cheetos, okay. Sunscreen, long sleeve. I think I forgot one up here. Uh, sunscreen, water, food, hats, towels, life preserver, floaty. Sunscreen, umbrella, water, good. And Laura, uh, Barbie, you could also talk about food safety and packing a safe cooler with drinks in one cooler and food in the other one. So I don't know if you mentioned that one. Correct. That was um, that one on food packaging and labeling. That's a definitely an important one because if um, Laura and her friends are going to be out there all day, you've got to make sure if you're taking sandwiches, you know, um, the mayonnaise, you know, can't, can't stay out all day. So you want to make sure those foods are separated um, from some of the other ones. Maybe you take an ice chest with all of your food in it and your drinks in another one. Um, something else on sunscreen. Most of y'all are saying something about wearing sunscreen. How often do you have to reapply sunscreen? And what kind of sunscreen should you buy? I've got from five hours to 30 minutes to every hour. Okay, uh, go, good rule of thumb, um, and I was looking back into the, um, uh, our packaging of our study guides. Uh, one of the things it says is at least to apply every two hours. And then it goes into detail on the SPF of a sunscreen. Whether, you, you know, you can buy ones that say 100, but is that really going to do what you think it's going to do and it's going to, block every UVA, UVB ray um, from coming through and getting you sunburned? Or do you, do you go for one that's maybe an SPF of 30 or 45 and reapply every two hours? So those are things that are included in on the sun safety um, information in your study guides as well. So it's got a lot of good, useful information, especially now that we're going into the summer months. Um, some important things that you would norm, use on a normal everyday basis, especially here in Texas. I like that one, uh, Jake, bring aloe vera in case. Yes, because I got sunburned the other day, exactly. Uh, make sure you take aloe vera with you. Uh, wear sun, sunglasses to protect your eyes. Awesome, that's exactly. Elizabeth, phone chargers. Okay, that's true, you have to go plug them into the car. Um, 
but that way in case you know something happened and you needed an emergency you had your phones um, to contact somebody y'all are coming up with a lot of neat ones you know so you think through the process of how you would would you act something out would you just be more cut and dry with doing a presentation or how would you go about doing a presentation um, for healthy lifestyles yeah and that's one thing to remember there's there's lots of ways to get your point across and that's the unique thing about healthy lifestyles it's not your traditional reasons format and so it does um, allow you for some creativity with your group and so that's the the fun thing so what we want to do now is we want to move in and show you um, again remind you what the classes um, will be for this next year um, so you can already we've decided to keep those classes the same as they were this year and so um, you can see there that you can already start studying um, I know some of you are probably thinking man this is a lot of overwhelming information but we wanted to really give you that an approach to the contest um, and, and show you how that works um, and feel free to um, please reach out to any of us for the three of us and I'm going to go back and let me see if I can I know they be in the beginning we weren't able to um, see my screen so let me see if I can go back and share our contact information real quickly so and, and so you can also put a, a face with a name see if I can get this up there on the screen hopefully maybe maybe Okay, so um, if you, again, if you're wondering, okay, who were these people I was listening to today, um, you can, we don't have our email addresses on there, but at least you can, if you reach out to your county agent or you can look us up in, in AgriLife People, if you have a um, question, um, we are certainly help you um, get ready for the, prepare for this contest. And you know, if there's an interest from project leaders to maybe um, have a more in-depth training, we will certainly think about that and consider doing that um, later, uh, maybe this summer or early fall to to get um, get more teams involved again the state contest is an invitational contest and it is actually right now is um, open to intermediates and seniors and so that's something to to think about for um, um, you know next year I will tell you that don't wait to the last minute to start preparing um, and again because this is not only information that's contest specific but it's really life skill information that you're going to learn so with that said uh, Barbie Micah do either one of you have anything else you want to add I'll just say briefly this is one of those contests that you can incorporate so many different of your 4-H pro uh, projects different projects come into this one um, contest and so it makes it a lot of fun and you're already learning some of these things especially through nutrition um, to come into there plus your consumer decision making and that's a great point Barbie it's really a, a great opportunity to tie all of those FCH projects together um, in one opportunity and so yeah the great opportunity and some of you are commenting on um, healthy Texas ambassador and I'm going to you'll be getting some information on that but this is a great opportunity if you're a healthy Texas youth ambassador maybe to train a younger team an intermediate team so think about those opportunities but um, yeah uh, Hopefully you've learned something today. Micah, did, did you have something you wanted to? Yes, ma'am. Uh, I think Kalina Hill was asking about the FRED reading program being part of health and personal safety. It actually can on the new FRED virtual program. They do have a healthy lifestyles component of the FRED program. So just wanted to, right. it was easier to say it than type it. And also <laughs> thank y'all. I put my email in the chat box if y'all have any questions as well. Yeah, and, and Fred is a family who's reading every day. And remember, there's so many more components to health than just nutrition and, and physical activity. So think about all the umbrellas that are that are there for health. Um, we thank you all for being on today. I know some of you may be going to the next one. So we're going to give you a few minutes back uh, before the next one starts. So if you need to take a quick break, you can do that. And Callie, I'm going to turn it, I guess, back over to you for instruction. All right, thank you so much, Julie, and everyone else who presented. Um, Y'all be sure to go check in and be entered to win some door prizes. Um, if you are staying in this room for the next session, we'll begin that soon, or you can go 
to your next room now. Um, I just put the link in the chat box.